to the third and final segment of the Cajun Conservative Show today. I have the honor and the privilege of having Mr. Roland Roberts. He is a Republican 2024 presidential candidate. Mr. Robertson, welcome to the Cajun Conservative Show. How you doing, sir? I'm great. Thank you. Uh, man, you, you told me during prep uh, you've been uh, campaigning a lot. Uh, before we get into anything, again, how the campaign is going and uh, how, how the response you're getting uh, as a presidential candidate at these events. You know, it's been great. We, we're, we've got a strategy and uh, we believe it's a winning strategy. It's unconventional. Uh, we're not just going and trying to throw mud up against a wall and see what sticks. Uh, we're being very strategic. Uh, we obviously the faith community is highly important to our campaign. There's 210 million professing Christians. I need 90 million of them to win. Uh, but there's 50 million who sit in churches every Sunday morning that aren't even registered to vote. And so that's a huge issue for us. We want people to be registered to vote and engaged in the civic process. And so, uh, it, but it's been great. The, the reception has been well because of our platform. It's obviously, uh, we believe America needs God, first and foremost, above all the policies, no matter how brilliant you are, no, no matter what a strategist you are for fixing the economy and national security and, and housing and education and so on and so forth. Uh, if, if God isn't where he's supposed to be, you will not get the results you're looking for. And so uh, we put him first and then we focus on these other policies. I like how you're saying that, Mr. Robinson, because, you know, uh, Second uh, Chronicles says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I heal from heaven and heal their land. And mm -hmm. I always looked at this as a pre uh I compare this to the presence of the kings of Israel and Judah. Every time Judah had a good biblical king, the nation would grow. It would prosper because it put God first. But when it would have a, a, a king that was not serving God or didn't hold up to the principles of what God wanted them to do, the nation would fall. And I'm seeing that right now. We have a president that endorses LGBTQ. We have a president that endorses uh, people coming across the board. I'm not saying they're not safe or whatever, but at the same time, a lot of these people come with evil intentions. Uh, our, our country's a mess. Our financial problems are a mess. Um, we we have word, and I spoke about it, uh, where the, the one of the third banks in America wanted to have collapsed again this week. Our GDP is at 1.1. We just have a lot of things, and I think... I believe President Biden, I'm not trying to judge him, but President Biden's core message is not based on faith. It's based on what left-leaning agenda people want him to do. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a war on God in America today. It, it's, it's an all-out war on God in America. And uh, they call good evil and evil good. Uh, it's upside down. Wrong is right. Right is wrong. Uh, and of course, that's the, nothing to be further from the truth. But that's the time that we live in. These are the days. But I actually think it's a great opportunity for people like us to be the light and salt that we're supposed to be. He did say, God did say, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Uh, it's, it's a promise. Um, and as, as, as scripture you quoted as well, uh, I also am not, uh, things are as bad as things are. I also have great hope because we know that Daniel two twenty one he setteth up Kings and removeth Kings. Right. Uh, you know, we either believe him or we don't, uh, he either holds all power in heaven and earth in his hand, or he doesn't, uh, he's either the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or he's not, uh, either he can still, he's, he's more powerful than the U S government. Uh, or more powerful than any cheating or lying or stealing of, of, of votes or anything that happens. Uh, either is more powerful than our U.S. election system. It's more powerful than all of the nations on earth, or he's not. And of course, from my perspective, I'm in this because I believe I'm called to do it. I would not have done this voluntarily. You don't wake up one morning and decide to run for president of the United States, especially in this climate, and especially when you have a loving wife uh, like I do and a great family. And you, nobody wishes this, uh, the, you know, the road that you have to follow uh, on yourself uh, voluntarily. But I know that I was called to do it for such a time as this. And the truth is, we don't know what this world's going to look like a year from now. We just have absolutely no idea, except we do know it will look nothing like it does today. We, we will likely be in a war, hopefully not, but I don't think this, is, this administration seems to be uh, desirous of putting us in a world war. 
uh, and creating chaos and havoc wherever we can uh, to try and maintain our global dominance. And of course, that's uh, not what I'm about. I have a very strong foreign policy, I'm, but I'm for peace. I want diplomacy first. Uh, and then in places and times that we can't, uh, then it's the worst thing they could have done. But, uh, you know, that's kind of our perspective on on how we lead and how we focus. And, and really, it's about building an, uh, an America for, 20 sec- for the 22nd century. We're a declining world superpower. You've got China, obviously, as the emerging uh, world superpower. And so we are playing chess and we are losing. Yeah, well, everybody else is playing chess. We're playing checkers, unfortunately. We're still losing at that. Um, so, so, Mr. Robert, you know, let, we have to we have to go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room. You have Nikki Haley. You have a uh, potential potential Ron DeSantis running. Uh, the biggest name out of all, Donald Trump. Donald Trump is running close to 60, 70 percent of the polls. I, since the last election, I don't believe in polls, unfortunately, because of the does does the chaos that went around the 2020 election but you know we we've, we've had another presidential candidate on here and I asked him the same question y'all are considered long shots mm-hmm. and what, what what is your attitude on that as a long shot because a lot of people might say well Roland Roberts and other ones that are jumping in they really don't have a shot they don't have the money like Nikki Haley and other candidates have what do you tell them going into this race or would you tell the American people that say, look, this is a long shot. We shouldn't vote for him because of this, that, that issue right there. Sure. No, it's a great question. And, and the answer is I'm, I'm the dark horse of the race is, is really the position. Uh, obviously, you, people can only currently poll what they know. Uh, but one thing that has been clear from the polls is in the other category, 19 percent are currently voting other, meaning they don't want Donald Trump. They don't want Ron DeSantis. They don't want Nikki Haley, who, by the way, we are uh, running just shy of her not financial numbers. Uh, so she does not have more money uh, and certainly can't go the distance uh, for sure. There's also only a, a few of us, uh, two of us really at the moment that are actually running for president of the United States. I get that there's other presidential candidates, but Nikki Haley's not running to be the president of the United States. Bivik's not running to be the president of the United States. He's great at culture, fighting culture wars, and uh, but he's really better at it as a media pundit. He, he prefers to just be on camera and talking about the issues, and he's good at it. In fact, you know, he'd make a great press secretary for me. I, I'd love to have him, you know, out there, but not running the country, not when we, whoever is the next president of the United States must be well experienced in foreign affairs, foreign policy and diplomacy because of the nature of that office. We don't need them. Uh, and of course, with Ron DeSantis, he can't out negotiate Mickey Mouse. He's certainly not going to go toe to toe with Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping of China. So from my perspective, we're not as long of a shot as it seems at the moment, uh, perhaps to some people. And I can tell you that a lot of the politicians that I've been on the U.S. delegation to South Sudan, helping the world's newest nation. They're also the most corrupt nation in the world. And so we've tried to help them learn how to be a country and have good governance. Kind of hard to do whenever we're so corrupt on our side and actually better at it than they are and trying to tell them how to how they should clean up their act. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to run for president, because I wanted to do right by people and right by nations and right by God. In the process. So the answer, the short answer to the long shot is Joseph didn't even have, stand a chance. He was in a prison, actually, whenever God called him up in the same day. David was not even in the lineup. And the problem is, and my actually hope and prayer for this election is that we will have a bunch of Samuels in the church, people who have discernment, people who look at the lineup of Jesse's sons and say, you know what? He's not here. He's not here. The next president's not in this lineup. I don't understand. Where is he? He's out in the field. David was doing what he was supposed to be doing, minding his business, being faithful. uh, And it took someone with discernment to say, I'm not picking from these. Where's where is the right one for this time? And I believe that at that at the the moment God ordains, uh, that's the place that I will be. So let, let, as we go on with that point, and I agree with you. I, I think most Christians don't have discernment in politics. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of preachers and a lot of teachers of the gospel say, hey, let's leave politics alone. We're going to let God just pick. But we have a role that we have to, if God, if like you, if you get elected president and people vote, they have to be understanding of the Holy Spirit to vote for you because God is leading them to vote right. for you. That's right. If I, The only way I win is if God wins. I he, he and I had a lot of these conversations before I filed and announced uh, because I said, I only win if you touch people's hearts. 
You have to open the doors. You have to make the way. Uh, yes, you've prepared me. Yes, I have extensive foreign policy experience and education experience and diplomacy and, you know, all of the different uh, entrepreneurship and econ economic and have run companies. And I, so I get all of that. But this is much bigger and it's different. And it's a unique time. Even the conservative granddaddies uh, or of organizations and politics in America don't know how to run, how to uh, strategize or manipulate, if you will, the election the way that they've always done. Uh, so I believe that it is high time, past time for a candidate that is Holy Spirit led, uh, both in how I campaign, when I campaign, uh, and also understanding that he will do in his time exactly what he wants to do. Amen. Amen. On that note, you, you're talking about uh, you have foreign policy uh, experience and and you have background in government. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? What you know, because there's, there's going to be a lot of people that that that's going to ask that question, you know, people that are not of faith. Uh, well, we know he's a Christian, but but I want to know what his policies are. What did he what has he done for this nation so far in this role of what he sure. took on for president or running for president? Sure. Well, I, you know, the, the main thing is I've been focused on cybersecurity, uh, national security, uh, artificial intelligence, defense systems, um, and and then also clean water initiatives and education in Africa. Uh, so we've worked, and that's for the past several years, uh, eight plus years, I've been focused on that. Starting back in 2004, uh, 2006, we were doing data security. Uh, and, and that was because of the position that I held at a multi-billion dollar publicly traded company. And, uh, and, and they had a data breach, and then they tasked me with the response to that uh, and, and helping to address that and solve that. And so that led me into the data security business uh, and ran several companies after that and then became an entrepreneur doing it. But, but really, it's the numerous countries in Africa that I've been an advisor to the president or the minister of defense, minister of energy, the minister of national securities, uh, and then uh, some finance ministers, uh, and then also uh, in China. Uh, obviously, on the U.S.-China trade war, uh, I spoke to the CPC in the Congress in the Great Hall of the People in Beijing, China, in 2017, uh, and they they actually wanted me to address the topic of the U.S.-China trade war. Uh, that was the Wednesday before President Trump was going to meet with Xi Jinping for the first time, and uh, they wouldn't even allow him in the building. Uh, they had to do their photo op on the steps, and then, of course, I not only in, I addressed uh, their Communist Congress, and then... Uh, other business leaders in China. And I was very direct. And I talked about uh, intellectual property theft. I obviously talked about uh, trade and how they just basically rip and uh, replace and duplicate everything that we do. And, you know, my message uh, was that uh, there's a better way. And uh, that's but but you have to understand their culture, uh, their culture prides uh, in business, the value of deception. So whenever we believe what they say, that makes us naive, not empathetic. But because we impose and project uh, America's values system and virtue system on to things that are said there, that's what creates the internal arguments and fights here. That's why Africa is the great pawn in the world today. They're the last greatest economic frontier on earth. And the United States and China, we keep maneuvering to, to win different countries in Africa and on that continent. Uh, that's what Sudan is all about. Uh, and, and most people don't understand, uh, you know, the things that have been happening there. But I've been involved in some of those uh, conversations and, and happenings even this week uh, with the uh, skirmishes and the fighting in Sudan. So that's a little bit of, of, uh, of my background. But really, moving forward, uh, we can't solve today's problems uh, with today's thinking. We have to solve today. To solve today's problems correctly, we have to think, ha have forward thinking uh, applied today. And so for me, we have focused on the economy. I want zero, to eliminate the national debt, not to reduce the debt, not to reduce the deficit. I want to eliminate the debt. I have a plan to do that. We have it uh, on our policies page on our website, RolandRoberts.com. Uh, we want to have uh, eliminate the federal income tax for people on Social Security and for people making $60,000 or less per year. We actually are able to pay off the debt by doing that and restructuring the tax code. The tax code is 10 times larger than the Holy Bible that tells people how to live a whole life. It's ridiculous. And it's insane, and no one can follow it exactly. Uh, it's used to play games or to weaponize against people. That's why it's as confusing as it is. And so we want to do away with that. 
uh, that will also reduce the, the IRS by at least 90 percent on headcount. Uh, the third thing I would do to help rescue the economy and to uh, lower inflation is I would uh, reduce the size of federal government by 20 percent in four years by freezing freezing all rehires uh, for non-critical positions, which means as uh, the, the natural uh, federal government attrition rate every year is 17 percent. And so uh, if we just simply do not rehire uh, people in these positions that are non-critical positions, and there's a lot of fluff, as you know, uh, we actually reduce the size of government. Most of the other things require acts of Congress. That is something the executive branch can do. Uh, so the economy is a major focus of mine. National security is a major focus. And then the family. I want to strengthen the family. Uh, the family is under attack today. The 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 uh, We mock men for being men. They, they, they're they mocking women for being women. Uh, they're attacking our children. They want their minds. And our children are not property of the state. They're pro they are given to parents by God. They're a gift of God to parents. And parents are the ones charged with raising them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So uh, my perspective is that we are supposed to empower and help and encourage parents. We have to help strengthen families. You can't do that whenever 70 some percent of your uh, citizens are divorced. So we need to strengthen marriages. We need to strengthen families and homes, give better support. Uh, I'll appoint a family czar to help create those kind of programs. You know, if you haven't noticed, everything in America that gets celebrated seems to be what everyone does. Uh, they just follow with whatever the national narrative is. I want the national narrative to be family is great. And by the way, when you place a strong emphasis on a healthy, strong family unit, all of the other people groups and uh, vulnerable or marginalized or whatever other lifestyles people choose, actually, it allows them to flourish unlike they do today. If it, you can't Flour they can't flourish when you destroy by destroying the family. You strengthen the family. You strengthen the nation. I 100 percent agree. And it just the 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 the, the family emphasis is, is growing apart because, how, you know, you talk about 70 percent of Americans in their marriages and divorce. That is a shocking statistic right there. Um, and, and you have them kids that are just running around, not not having an influence of a dad and a mom. You have parents that have to try to be both. And I think this is one of the reasons why we have this trend of confusion in America, because a lot of kids are being grown up by either a single dad or a single mom. And they pick up them traits when they pose when they're the opposite sex of their uh, opposite sex of their parents. And it causes confusion. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the incarceration of all the people who are incar uh, incarcerated, 92% uh, of them came from broken homes. Uh, that's a staggering statistic. Uh, we think it's the guns or we think it's, uh, you know, these other problems. And the truth is, if the home was stronger, if the family unit was stronger, uh, that can that alone can help the crime issues uh, in, in, in America. But you can keep focusing on the uh, ancillary problems. You can keep chopping off the limbs, but until you uh, get to the root, you're never going to solve the problem. You're putting band-aids, uh, you know, on, on the Titanic and hoping it'll stop the leak. Yeah, and it, it won't stop the leak. It just it makes the leaks bigger because water's trying to find another route out of there. Uh, Mr. Roberts, also, you know, we we talking about, you know, we we mentioned your long shot and all this stuff. I want to talk about the debate. We have our fir the the first presidential debate in uh, in August. I believe it was is going to be done by Fox News. Uh, unfortunately, Tucker Carlson won't be asking y'all the questions. I wish he was, but he's not there no more. Uh, but we we have a we had a lot of we had a lot of news break about that Donald Trump uh, saying that the RNC did not get his approval for this debate, and uh, I, I made a whole TikTok video on it. I made a I have a whole segment on it from the last episode about this um but that debate we you know I, I made a statement in that that uh in that segment where i said well if donald trump don't go let's listen from the other candidates because i, I do get a lot of flack and a lot of uh rebuttal from conservatives and republicans that love trump and they say oh well, you're coming against trump no i'm just speaking obvious facts i think sure. donald trump should be up there with every republican candidate especially if there's only five or six of y'all they should let y'all up there but, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we know it looks by the money. You talked about the money. You're you're right behind Nikki Haley. Um, in percentage wise, you're up there. Do you see yourself up there in August? And, you know, how do you how do you approach a debate like that on a scale where you you possibly going to be in be debating Donald Trump? You're sure. going to be debating we, we Nikki Haley. 
Yeah, we'll be in. We're, we're in fourth place currently in the money. Uh, so we absolutely uh, will be on the debate stage and up there. Uh, I sure hope Trump is there. I told I said on Twitter, I said, uh, you know, I addressed him and said that uh, uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. I, obviously, uh, no one needs your permission uh, to to schedule the debate or where it's going to be or who's going to ask the questions. Uh, this isn't a coronation. Uh, that you know, this is this is a a primary, and uh, America is and, and primaries are are built in order for the best ideas to rise. And quite frankly, having some depth and substance as opposed to just just I'm winning so. Just let's just just let me be the candidate and let me go uh, attack the other side. Uh, that's not new ideas. That's not how do I be- improve America? That's I'm bitter and I want to get revenge. Uh, so I told I said uh, on Twitter, I said, uh, hey, you don't have to be there if you don't want. We hope you do. Uh, but that's not very American. Uh, and unless you're going to start identifying as a six year old girl, stop whining, man up, show <laughs> up and uh, let whoever is, uh, you know, asking the questions. I said, I'll debate you in a parking lot. But you're going to sit there and whine about the venue and the questions uh, that that that's a bit uh, insane to me. I actually would love to go back to, you know, some of the debates in the in the uh, early 1900s when it was three, four hours were the minimum uh, debates. Uh, and they really got into it because it wasn't just sound bites. They really debated. And you're talking about uh, statesmen. We haven't had statesmen really run for president of the United States. We've had politicians run. You haven't had a lot of statesmen. And so that's what I think is going to be great about this debate. I do think there are some people that love America uh, that will be on that stage that are competent. Uh, But I also believe that we are in a unique time. I believe that it doesn't matter how much, just how matter uh, much how you love America. It's going to matter what kind of leadership abilities you have. And quite frankly, Donald Trump is everything I was raised not to be. Don't be a bully. You, you respect women. Um, you don't have a potty mouth. Uh, you 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 you, we, uh, you should be humble and walk humbly and don't be an arrogant jerk. And you know, so there was inherent things there. I think he was. Right for the right for the position in 2016. I'm grateful for many of the policies and things he did at that time. Uh, but I also think that uh, you know, and with Asa Hutchinson running and some of these others, I mean, he would have been a great president in the 80s or 90s. These people, the fact that they're even on the debate stage shows how out of touch they are with America. If they're when you're 78, 79, 80 years old, uh, you don't need to be running the country. You're not even going to have to live with your own policies. Uh, that that's a problem to me. And, and this is the first generation where uh, you got Gen Z coming in voting. You've had the uh, many of the most senior conservatives. Uh, we lost a lot during COVID and people do not understand the makeup of this coming election. Uh, it is up for everyone. And what the Republicans think and what the Democrats think, there's going to be a, a massive shock coming. So, so on that note, okay. and uh, we, we we got a few more minutes. I hope you don't mind. Um, you you talking about Gen Z? You are talking about newer uh, a newer voting uh, age coming up? I had uh, one of my good friends, the liberal trucker, on this show, and we talked about these kids coming out of uh, universities and what they're teaching. Um, a lot of liberals believe that this is going to be the generation that turns America from. From a uh, from from more conservative to more left leaning, and that, that I want to ask you about about that group of people, but also the age issue. We've had the view. Uh, I, I put them on my list. How the heck they got on TV uh, lists? Uh, <laughs> but they they made a point to where when uh, it was Nikki Haley on Fox News discussing Biden's age. Biden might be eighty six by the time he get out. She made some statements. And all that stuff. So my two questions right here would be, how do you influence Gen Z that is probably more liberal because of colleges and high school teachings? And, you know, could you mention that? Do, should we be concerned with the age of Republican candidates as Asa Hutchison and Donald Trump? Because when Donald Trump, if Donald Trump would get reelected, he'd be 80 years old. We're in the same right. boat that we have Biden in right now. Right. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And the answer is yes, that they do not need none of none of these appeal to the younger voters. Forget policies, forget platforms, forget everything. A lot of Gen Z just looks at you and goes, yes, no. It's that simple. They're used to swiping left or swiping right for accepting friendships or however those, you know, the different apps work uh, to to be a friend or connect. So I, to me, 
uh, they're, they're going to make instant decisions of uh, no on you, maybe on you, yes on you. Uh, it's so visual to them and it's instant. Uh, that's why I think that no poll can possibly caps encapsulate what this election is going to be about, as we saw in 2016. Uh, in fact, it wasn't until after the first debate that people thought Donald Trump even had a chance. He was such a long shot. In fact, he was the clown uh, uh, yeah. of, of the whole candidate uh Slate. And so, uh, but after the first debate, it, it got more real and people saw, okay, uh, he actually has some ideas. He's here to stay and, uh, and allowed it to progress. But with, as it relates to Gen Z, I can tell you, you know, they think we're old. Uh, so the fact that th they think the others are archaic, uh, you know, from, from, from a prehistoric age that they, they can't even fathom somebody like that being president, by the way, they would be the oldest presidents or leaders of any nation in the world, a free nation in the world, uh, by by age. Uh, and if we go by the trends that are happening in the rest of the world, which we we usually do, uh, uh, they're all electing younger leaders, uh, people who they feel like they can relate to, uh, people who they think at least better understands them. They want someone who has enough experience and is seasoned enough, but still youthful, people who still feel like they can relate to and understand. But I'll tell you this. Yes, they are left leaning. Uh, yes, many of them uh, on social issues, they they think very differently about those. But they seem to be more open to truth. That's the difference. For the last eight years, we haven't had truth. We've had entertainment. For the last four years, we've had a simulation and we haven't even had, you know, uh, the, the president being the president. Uh so the, the 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 deep state or the administrative state, uh, the, the the bureaucracies uh, have been able to just run the way they prefer to run, uh, and their agenda is uh, liberal. Uh, so I believe that uh, the Gen Z, I have I have great hope for them, uh, and especially even in this election because they value truth. They they know authentic uh, authenticity more than the millennials, more than Gen X, more than uh, even seniors. Senior, a lot of them still look, watch the news and think, oh, that's just the truth because it came from the news or it came from doctors. So therefore, it must be right. Whereas my generation and, and, and younger are going, are you kidding me? Just because you have a doctor after your name for every doctor that says this, I can find a doctor who says that. So I don't believe either one of you. I'm going to look for things myself. Uh, but they understand who is authentic. I'm not reading from a script. I don't have a teleprompter. That's all fake. It is all uh, show. They want authentic, and that's what will win this. That's why Ron DeSantis doesn't even stand a chance. He's at 16 percent poll. He doesn't even stand a chance in this because he can't speak unless it's scripted. It has to be in here if you're going to fight for America, if you're going to actually move America forward, defend America. Do you think Vladimir Putin's having to read from a script? Much less you start getting into, into, into Biden territory, uh, you know, where everything is everything is staged. Uh, you have to know what you believe and why you believe it. And I believe that we have brought appeal to uh, a lot of people. There's 15 percent on the far, far right, 15 percent on the far, far left. And I think 70 percent in the middle uh, ha say, uh, look, we may not agree with your, your faith or your social positions or anything else, but at least we know who you are. We know what you stand for. And uh, and and we know that you will respect and listen uh all American citizens. You'll be a president for everyone, uh, even though you'll stand strong for what you believe is right. We can live with that. Hey Amen. That's, that's that's some good words right there, uh, Mr. Robert. If you, uh, Mr. Roberts, if you would mind, uh, when the final moments we have, could you let everybody know where they could find your campaign website and if they have any questions or any, or they want to contribute to your campaign, where they can find all that information? Sure, sure. Yeah, it's RolandRoberts.com. Uh, R O L L A N. Roberts.com. Obviously on Twitter at Roland Roberts, all of the, the handles on, on the social media is, is basically Roland Roberts. We'd love to have you as part of the team. I mean, the way they look at this is not how much you give, it's how many people give. And so uh, we certainly want uh, want, want uh, just even a dollar. Anything helps to show that you support this message. Uh, and, and by the way, that's how what elevates the message. You talking about a long shot has nothing to do with a long shot. It has to do with people who are engaged. And, and the more people who say that's the message I support, here's a buck. Uh, then everyone goes, OK, he gets the platform. He gets the mic. We're going to his message gets out. That's how the game is played. And, uh, and so I, I, I'm grateful for everyone who has supported us uh, and has gotten behind us because I believe uh, that America needs God. And we are all here for such a time as this.
Mr. Roberts, before we roll out, uh, so let's say like this, I, I'm, a, I'm a voter, I meet you for the first time. What would you tell me as a voter and you're trying to get my vote uh, for a final argument? Uh, my final argument is, is, look, America needs God. And whether you believe in God or not, I promise you things are so bad and getting worse that you want somebody in that seat who can get a hold of God, who has his phone number, who talks to him on the regular, who isn't going to make a move without his approval. And uh, I'm going to work on the economy. We're going to work on eliminating the debt. We're going to strengthen the family. We're going to make life better for uh, for everyone, for all Americans. And I'm the only candidate that comes uh, from the bottom up. I come from a holler in Beaver, West Virginia, uh, where I grew up. And, uh, I, you know, I, I go into grocery stores. Uh, I'll still go into a Walmart and get things that we need. No other candidate can say that. They, they, they can talk about, they think they understand what who you are and what your pain points are and what you struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. But I have I have lived it and I live it now. And uh, and, and so that's what who I'm fighting for. Mr. Roland Roberts, thank you for coming on the Cajun Conservative Show. It's always, it's always a pleasure. You're, you're always welcome here. If y'all send me an email, I'll make time for you to come on, my friend. Most uh, most appreciated. Thank you so much. Great right. being with you. All right. With that being said, I want to thank you for listening to the Cajun Conservative Show. And again, thank you, Mr. Roland Roberts, for coming on. Uh, we appreciate you coming on. Remember, everybody, Jesus Christ is king and he's coming back and he's coming back soon. So don't be fate of heart because Jesus has overcome the world. If you want to know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, reach out to me and I'll tell you how to make Jesus your Savior and heaven your home. Until next time, be blessed, be encouraged. You have a good one. And he